Now, for some of you who are skeptics, you might be thinking, well, great, so you can do any form of exercise? Well, in some sense, yes. I'll actually tell you this right off the bat. There are good data showing that if people do six second sprints, max all out sprints on a stationary bicycle, followed by one minute rest and repeat that six times, you see significant acute effects on brain performance. So the brain performance could be a memory task. Sometimes it is a memory task. It could be what's called a Stroop task, which is a cognitive flexibility task where you have to distinguish between the colors that words are written in and the content of the words. Okay, so-called Stroop task. I've talked about this on previous podcasts. I'll talk about it a little bit more later. Regardless of the cognitive test that's used, that very short duration, high intensity training increases performance significantly. As well, 20 or 30 minutes of so-called steady state cardio you know, figuring out how fast you can run or row or swim or stationary bike for 20 to 30 minutes at a steady state. And then you analyze people's cognitive performance on a memory task can be a working memory task. So remembering a short string of numbers, or it could be math problems. It could be the Stroop task. Any number of different tasks reveal the same thing, which is that the longer duration, lower intensity cardio also significantly improves performance. Now, does that mean that you can do six rounds of six seconds of sprinting with a minute in between or 20 minutes of cardiovascular exercise and get the same effect on brain performance? Well, if you're just looking at overall improvements in performance, so for instance, the percentage of information that you learn if you do or you don't do the exercise or if you compare those two forms of exercise that I just mentioned, in that sense, yes, it really doesn't make a difference, which may have you scratching your head, but in a few moments, I'll explain why that is. On the other hand, Different forms of exercise, of course, impact our bodily health differently. Higher intensity, shorter duration exercise, of course, impacts things like VO2 max and which circulating hormones and neuromodulators are going to be present very differently than longer duration, lower intensity exercise. So too, if you have people do single joint isolation resistance training exercises, like a single leg leg extension or both legs leg extension versus 10 sets of 10 in a squat exercise, you're going to see very different specific adaptations at the physical level, at the bodily level. 